Well, good morning. Welcome to Oak Ridge. We are so glad that you're joining us online this morning. Uh, what a great day it is to um, just listen to God's word and to hear from him. Now, before we start today, we have some super exciting news yes, that we want to share with you. We're, We're gathering, gathering together, together again, again inside, inside the, the church, church building. building. Yes, what? so exciting. Yay. <laughs> so starting March 28th, we will be holding one service inside at 1030. That's right. And there are going to be three ways that you can join us at 1030 on March 28th. You can, um, we will be, the first way is we will be, of course, streaming live to our Facebook page. And we also will be still transmitting live to our parking lot so you can sit in your cars and listen to your car radio. And the third way, which we just said, is you can come inside the building and sit and uh, be in God's presence in the church building. So those are the three ways. Yes. And so if you decide to join us the third way and you want to be inside the building on March 28th, it's very important we ask that you register with us mm -hmm. because there is, of course, limited capacity. Um, so there again are three ways you can register. The first is you can call and leave a voicemail. 315-866-0575. Or you can email us at office at oakridgefmc.com. Or you can Facebook Messenger us. Mm -hmm. And we'll get back to you that we've received your message and we got a seat saved for you. That's right. Yes. And we will be doing this weekly. Um, so we just want to know that you're coming March 28th, if that's the day, if you can make it. So yes, that's that. <laughs> yes. And when you register. Right. We do need to know your name and how many people are coming with you March 28th mm -hmm. um, so that we can see, save the correct amount of seats and such. Yeah, that's awesome. And we are just, of course, wanting to remind you that if you do come into the church building um, in person, we would ask that you please wear your face covering, your face mask. Um, when you're walking into the building, when you're um, scooting to the bathroom or walking around, and when you're leaving. Now, once you are seated, if yes. you are comfortable to take your mask off, um, feel free to do so. And uh, then we will see that you're... Not only your eyes are smiling, but also your pearly whites. Yes. And we look forward to all of that. Yeah. yeah. So exciting. So exciting. And I'm so glad that you joined me, Kayla. Thanks. Me too. Cause, yeah. Because who wants to say that fun stuff by themselves? Yeah. yeah. I was so glad to share <laughs> with you guys. Oh, my goodness. And so as we excitingly go into our church service, we're going to go ahead and um, just say a word of prayer. So, Kayla, could you... Enter us into God's yes. presence. Yes. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, who you are and how you continue to work in our lives, Lord, and just that we can come to you with anything and with all things, and um, you're just always there for us. And I just want to lift up um, Joanne, that she just is your conduit, Lord, that you can just speak through her, Lord, and that, again, we can just hear from you and um, how amazing how you speak to us all individually, Lord, as you have continued to do this whole time. Mm -hmm. um, and we are grateful. I'm th thankful for the, just this exciting news. And um, we just pray that you work all things um, for your good, Lord. And we are just excited. Um, so we, we thank you for who you are, God. And... Um, how you work in our lives yeah. and we thank you for Jesus because without him it's not really all possible so we thank you for your son and just the just the the great love that you showed us through him yeah. um, so it's in his name that we pray amen 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 thanks Kayla yeah <laughs> Oh, it is such a joy to be part of this church family. Um, and I hope that you all have been as encouraged as I have been as we've gone through the series, How to Keep Your Head on Straight. Um, I know that God revealed a lot of his character to us as we studied Philippians 4.8. And we were also challenged in how to think and what things to meditate on. 
Well, last week we wrapped up the series. In fact, my dad was our guest speaker and he wrapped everything up for us in such a beautiful way. And as he was speaking, uh, there was a scripture verse that he mentioned about a time when he was having a difficult time keeping his head on straight and when he was just struggling and um, his walk was with God was off and God um, stopped him in his tracks when he read the end of Galatians 5, 6, which stated, all that matters is faith that causes you to love others. So I thought, you know what, let's take a look at that verse. Let's you and I take a look at that verse that um, stopped him so cold that day and just look at what that means. And um, another way that that is worded, I think in the NIV is, um, all that matters is your faith expressed through love. And another way is all that matters is faith worked out through love. So let's just first ask, what is faith? Well, Hebrews 11.1 1 says that uh, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we don't see. So that is what faith is. And then in Hebrews 12.2, it tells us where that faith comes from, where our faith should come from. Um, it says in Hebrews 12, 2, it says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Uh, now the Lu New Living Translation says, um, puts that verse this way, keeping our eyes on Jesus, who initiates and perfects our faith. So our faith, is found in Jesus. He is the one that initiates the faith within us and brings it to perfection. In him and through him, we have complete confidence in God, in his plan, in his timing, in his purpose. It's more than believing God. It's having full trust in God. So all that matters is faith expressed through love through love. Now, James tells us that faith without works is dead. So what is the work of faith? Well, in Galatians, it tells us that the work of faith is love, love that is patient and kind. And when we are empowered by the Spirit to have that kind of faith that expresses itself through love, then it tells us that the Spirit-filled faith-filled person will bear the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. So that is what this scripture verse means. It means that the faith, full and complete trust in God, will express itself through love. So um, Jesus shows us this uh, oh, wait, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just looked at my notes. I've got a really good scripture verse that I don't want to leave out. So where, what is love, though? It's not just kind of like love. It's the fact that love is of God, from God. God is love. That's what 1 John 4, 7, and 8 tells us, that God is love. So it's not just love, la, la, la. It's the love of God. So faith expressed through the love of God. Sorry, just had to throw that in there. Okay, <clears throat> so of course, anything that we hear throughout the scriptures that calls us to a type of living, a type of walking, um, much of that was expressed through the life of Christ as he walked in ministry here on earth when he came uh, to walk amongst us. And so we're gonna take a look today at John chapter 11, um, we're going to read verses 1 through probably about 14, um, and we're going to just kind of lay that scripture verse, all that matters is faith being expressed through love. And we're going to lay that scripture verse over this passage of um, in John and this story about um, Jesus hearing about his friend Lazarus. So let's take a look here. Um, this is chapter 11 again in the book of John starting with verse 1. Now a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, 
the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, this illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days. Okay, so when we look at this, first these first six verses of John chapter um, 11, upon receiving news that his friend that he loved was ill, um, Jesus immediately recited his faith in God. He knew and acknowledged that this illness was not going to end in death, but that God was going to take this and glorify himself through it and glorify his son Jesus through this. So he made that statement immediately as soon as he heard the news that his friend was ill. So the next verse um, says, Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. So, okay. Now right here is where I would be like, so he threw on his sandals and he hoofed it to Bethany to be right with his friend, to sit by his side, or in fact, it's Jesus. So immediately, because of his love for Lazarus, he would speak words of healing and healing would go out to Lazarus and Lazarus would be healed. So why does, he, why does it say he remained where he was? Because his love was intertwined with his faith. When Mary and Martha told Jesus that the one that he loved was ill, they used the verb philia for love, which means brotherly love or affection. And um, when in verse five, we read Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, the verb used for love changes to agape. Agape is love that only exists fully in Christ. It is absolutely unconditional, absolutely perfect, fully bound to faith in God and who he is. This kind of love sees the big picture, looks to God's purpose, God's plan, God's timing. Now our instinct when someone we love is ill or in need is to rush to fix it, to in fact, sometimes because we are so wanting to show our love for that person and our affection is stirred so much to go be with that person, we actually neglect our faith in God. And we might offer a quick prayer for that person, even an earnest prayer, but we're already in the car on our way to make things okay. But what if we did like Jesus did? What if we saw not just our affection for a person, our philea love, but what if we tapped into the agape love that comes from God, that sees the big picture, that is wrapped up in who he is? What if instead of just in immediately responding to our instinct to show up for somebody, what if we remembered that God has them? that we can trust God in this difficult circumstance. What if we looked at the big picture and saw that it was more than our affection for that person that was happening at this moment? Now, you all know that we've had, you know, some stuff going on at the Shumsky home and Chris is, has been struggling with mental health. And um, February 10th, I got a phone call from the therapist in Florida where Chris had literally just been, um, he had just been processed into this facility at one in the morning, Wednesday the 10th. And I got a phone call at about 10 in the morning. And the therapist asked if I would be willing to talk to my husband. And of course I said, yes. <clears throat> and um, so she, put him on speakerphone. So it was the three of us chatting, actually Chris and me, but she was in the background. 
And uh, Chris began to tell me that he wanted to come home. Um, he shouldn't be there. They had tricked us. It wasn't the right place for him. He was angry and he just wanted to come home. So panic started to rise up inside of me and my love or my affection for Chris won me to say, well, yes, of course, come home. We'll figure it out. Just, just come home. We can take care of things here. I don't want you to hurt. And it sounds like you're really hurting. But before I was able to say those words, God's spirit spoke to me and reminded me that Chris and I had gone to prayer. We had asked for what it was we should do. And he had answered us and he had made this trip to Florida possible. He had made this facility possible for him to go to. He had provided a way. He had already begun the healing process within Chris. So through tears, I had to say, stop and no, I think you need to be where you are. And I hung up with Chris and, of course, cried <laughs> and went to God, thankful that God had stopped me from bringing Chris home and thankful that God had reminded me that I can't fix Chris, that I can't fix anybody that I love, that I have great affection for. I had already given him over to God and God was already working and God was already moving. So one of the things that we, God reminds me of us, of his purpose all the time. And God had Chris at this facility in Florida, not only for Chris, but we can't even begin to understand the purposes that God has. But we know that when God looks at us, he looks at us with the same love that he looks at the person next to us with and the person next to us with and the person next to us with. And we cannot comprehend the fact that his purposes cover so much more than one person. So um, as we continue, this is so cool. You guys, I've decided I'm not a sermon writer, and you all know that, but I've decided that I might start writing sermons as a way to study the scripture because God reveals himself in crazy ways when you keep going deeper and deeper into a passage of scripture. So um, I might end up with a notebook full of sermons that nobody will ever hear, but that'd be cool. Um, so this, so like I said, faith wrapped up in agape, God's love, his perfect love. So this is what happens next, ready? So he didn't run off to Lazarus like many of us would want to. He s neglected his own personal affection for faith in God's bigger purpose and bigger plan. So this is what it says. He said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you are going back? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but the disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake... I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Jesus uh, knew that his time to go to his friend's home had come. And so he tells his disciples that it was time to go. Now, immediately his disciples went right to their affection for Jesus and they said to him, wait a minute, like you know that they're out to kill you. They're trying to find you, to stone you. We were just there. It's, I think it's too dangerous for you to go. 
So their affection for Jesus, their beautiful love and affection for Jesus was without faith. And so love, absent of faith, produces worry, panic, and fear. Whenever we simply rely on our own affections, our own love for people, and forget to look at the purpose of God, and forget to look at the overarching sovereignty of God, we can begin to have fear and panic. And that's what was happening with his disciples right here. Now, in many um, scholars say that when Jesus then talks about how there are 12 hours of daylight within the day, and then darkness comes, and you can walk around safely during the daytime until it is night when you might trip or fall. Most scholars are saying that he is saying to his disciples, my time to go is not yet here. In other words, I have faith in the Father that he still has me here for a purpose and a plan. And so I'm not going to be afraid of someone stoning me because I know that my time here is not yet finished. So this was him speaking reassurance to his disciples, reminding them that it was faith in God that could compel them to love him with the love of God, that agape love, putting aside their affection for Christ, which only causes fear and panic and worry. Um, so we are working through love, our faith is. See, Jesus knows his Father's plans. Jesus put aside his own affection, fully leans into faith, which then produces real love. And this love, see, this is where it gets just so cool. I mean, it's okay. It doesn't get cool. It just continues to be cool. Is that he sees that it's not just about Lazarus. See, Lazarus dying, Lazarus is being ill, wasn't just about bringing a miraculous healing to Lazarus. In verse 14, he says, Oh, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. So, you know, this time with Chris, right? Crazy. And me, I've always, I have faith in God. I love God. I just think, I just, I just can't say enough about how good God is. But I can't tell you how my faith deepened through this. If I had just said, come home, Chris, you know, all my affections, I just need to fix you and to make you better. If I had not allowed God to remind me of his plan and his purpose and his sovereignty, and if I had had faith in how I could help Chris instead of faith in what God was doing, then, yeah, maybe Chris would have had a, you know, a shot at a, a couple good months or whatever. But no. See, God saw that it wasn't just Chris, but he saw that faith in God pulling me towards love was going to deepen my faith in God. Like, wow, do I trust God? Like, I trusted God three weeks ago, yeah, but now, wow, I trust God. Like, I can't even, like, sit down with a cup of coffee with me and I'll just, like, talk to you for hours about how I trust God now because of what he is doing. The stories that are just coming from Chris and about, from the emails that he's gotten from other people who struggle with anxiety, who are going to God knowing that God loves them in the middle of their anxiety. It's crazy. The people that he was able to talk to in, in rehab, like Pastor Chris in rehab, they called him Pastor Chris. But anyway, they called him other names, but that's beside the point. But he... God was able to touch other people's lives because healing is going to take a while. So like, we have to have faith in God who sees the big picture because then we can love not just our own affection for somebody, but love that agape love that covers so many people. Lazarus 
would be miraculously brought back from the dead. Spoiler alert, that's what happens at the end of uh, John 11. You'll have to read it because I'm not. <laughs> and then the disciples, they were drawn into a deeper belief. The disciples, the one who ate with Jesus, walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, saw Jesus loving people, healing people, knew the love of Jesus right in their midst, their faith was deepened and their belief in him was deepened. And then in, oh, where is it? Verse 35, okay. So verse 35 in John, it says, it shows us that Jesus knows us and knows our the love that we feel. And it tells us that Jesus wept. That verse has been so significant to people over the centuries who have seen that Jesus understands our the depth of our hurt, the depth of our emotions, the depth of what it is to love somebody, to have a friend, to, to be just done with death, to be done with this world, and just the depth of that emotion, he knows it. And so he shares it with you. When you lose somebody, he was there just where you are. So just reading that scripture verse, see when Lazarus died, because Jesus didn't immediately go to heal him or even speak healing, we have this beautiful scripture passage that we can read that reminds us that Jesus knows us, that Jesus knows our hearts, knows our hurts, understands, has walked where we walk. And then later on, so not only that, in verse 42 of John 11, it says, I knew that you were you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So Martha and Mary and Lazarus had a relationship with God, but because Lazarus died, there were a group of mourners there. Those mourners would not have been there had Jesus spoke words of healing from where he was, because Lazarus would have been healed immediately, those mourners would not have been there. So we have to remember that we have faith in this God that sees the big picture and loves your loved one that's struggling, loves you when you're struggling, and he knows that there are other people in the midst of your struggling that will receive healing. And so if it's deep and it's taking a long time, for you to see that healing, have faith in God. He's doing a work. He's loving the people around you. He's encouraging people who will hear your story 10 years from now. He is working. Have faith. And that faith will show itself to you and the love of Christ will be thrown, shown through you. Then there's verse um, okay, sorry, verse 46, 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Okay, so if Jesus had gone with his affection for Lazarus, and like we so often do, just our knee-jerk reaction, what can I do to help? How can I get there? How can I make things better? How can I fix this? If he had just done that and not immediately gone to his faith in God, that God would not allow this to end in Lazarus's death, but that it was happening so that God would be glorified and that so the Son of God would be glorified. Because he went to that faith, the love, his agape love, was able to cover so many other people than if he had just gone with his philea, affectionate love that's so beautiful but so not perfect and so not fully entrenched and intertwined with faith in God. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is just a lot, right? <laughs> when Chris called and God called me to faith, um, 
once I released my affection, my love for Chris, uh, to full faith in God's plan, um, my eyes were opened. And um, I see that God is working and that God is moving again. And that the love that is filling me now is, is God's love. It's not my uh, affection for Chris, but it is the absolute love of God um, being shown through me as we go through this battle, and it's a battle. Um, Lazarus died. His sisters buried him. It went to that level of hurt and sadness. But in God's sovereignty, Jesus went to Bethany. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Your faith and my faith is deepened as we read the account in the book of John. The disciples' faith was deepened, the ones that walked with him. Those that were standing around, the mourners, some had belief in God for the very first time, believed that Jesus is the Son of God. So I don't know where you are right now and what your struggles are. And maybe you're waiting for something and you don't understand why God hasn't answered. Um, you don't understand why it's getting so dark and why it's gotten so deep. Um, I would just encourage you to really trust God. Um, Proverbs tells us to trust the Lord with all your heart and to lean not into your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. That's when we start there with that full trust, and we're not trying to understand it, but we're fully trusting God while we wait for the darkness to become light again. Just remember that God has such a purpose such a plan. Let him deepen your faith. Let him fill you with the love that is the perfect love of God that just knows that there is a bigger picture. Look at the people around you that are being affected by what you're going through and how they're being encouraged because you can understand them. Like when Jesus wept, now we know that he understands us. Look and trust God. God has a purpose and a plan. All that matters is faith being worked out or expressed through love. So let's have faith in God. Let's trust that his love is working all things together for good. We are called by God and love God so we can stand in that promise knowing that truly all things are working together for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And he will be glorified and many people will be encouraged and their faith will be deepened as we allow ourselves to rest in the faith that God is God and he is working. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you um, for the way that you teach. And um, it was just so exciting to see how good you are as, you, as I read this scripture. And Lord, help us to just know that you're working. Even when we can't see it, you're working. Even when we don't know how, we know that you are working. And you're working through love, through love through that agape, perfect love. Lord Jesus, help us to put aside our own affections for all of those that we care about and instead focus in on trusting you, having faith in you, and then your love will be expressed through us as we cling to you in complete confidence and hope. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you again online next Sunday, the 21st, 
And then, as we said, if you'd like to be inside the building on the 28th, please let us know. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love. Surround us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love. Surround us. Fear is changing now. The spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love, your love, surround us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love, surround us. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your
Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord. 